Hello class, hello teachers, welcome to Jiggy Math. So I am here once again for another lesson video. Now, if you do have questions or requests, you may email me at jttadeo2014 at gmail.com or you can also use the comment section for this purpose. Now, by the way, before we proceed to our lesson, just in case you haven't seen the lesson on factorial, please visit that. Please check out the link for that video in the description box. Now let's go to the lesson. So the lesson for today is about counting technique, multiplication principle. So in other books, this is also called as fundamental counting technique or fundamental counting principle. Now let's try this simple problem. So how many ways can we arrange Alan, Bert, and Chalk? along a line. So imagine that they're falling on line. In how many ways can we arrange these three men? So suppose A is Alan, B is Bert, and C is Chalk. Definitely the first position that you'll be thinking of, or first arrangement that you'll be um, thinking of is A, B, C. So Alan is the first on line, followed by Bert, then followed by Chalk. Now we can also have a different arrangement. We can have Alan first, followed by Chalk, and then followed by Bert. Or you can have Bert in front, followed by Alan, then Chalk. We can have B, C, A, that's Bert, Chalk, and Alan. Or we can have also Chalk in front of the line. So Chalk, Bert, and Alan. Definitely the last will be Chalk, Alan, and Bert. So in total, we have six different arrangements, okay? Notice that A, B, C is a different arrangement with A, C, B. Now, we can also use a three diagram to come up with all the possible arrangements. Okay, so as you can see, you have this three diagram, and then we came up with all of these six different arrangements. But definitely the method listing or the listing method is uh, going to be time consuming if there are many distinct or different items involved. Okay, now what is the alternative or what could be other way or other method of doing this? The second method is consider filling boxes. So we have three boxes here. And then they represent the three different items. So the first box is the one who should be in front of the line. So in how many ways can we do this? So the first box can be filled in three ways with either A, B, or C. So therefore, we have three choices for the first box. Now, for each of these three ways of filling the first box, there are two ways of filling the second box. So let's say, for example, if this is if we have pick A or Alan to be here to be in front, then we have two choices left for the second box or for the second or for the one in the middle of the line, and that will be either B or C. Okay, so which means we have two ways of filling the second box. And for each of the ways of filling the first and second boxes, there's just one way or one person left of filling the third box. And that will be one. And what we, we need to do after all of this, after deciding on, on the number of choices for each boxes, uh, we have to multiply uh, the three boxes or the three numbers. So as a result, it's going to be equal to 3 factorial. Right? Or that would be equal to 6. Now let's have another example. How many possible arrangements there will be if you want to arrange four different books on a shelf? Okay, so this arrangement is in a row or along a line. And take note, we're only talking about different, four different books. So what should be the answer for the first box or for the first option we have uh, four choices or four books to choose from and then for the second box we have three 
and then we have 2, then we have 1. So we multiply all of them together, or this is just equal to 4 factorial. So similarly, if we're going to arrange five different books on a shelf or along a line, then the answer is going to be 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, or simply 5 factorial. So looking at this, looking at the pattern, we will come up with the uh, we will come up with this concept, which is the number of ways of arranging n distinct items in a line is n factorial. Now this can also be um, translated or written as a multiplication principle. So if there are m ways to do one thing and n ways to do another, then there are m times n ways of doing both. Let's have this example. So let's say we have this cards and then we have different letters. So all of them are different letters, different from one another. There's no letter that is the same with another card. So if you notice, this spells out a logarithm. Okay, so in total we have nine cards. Now let's have the first question. Find the number of different arrangements of these cards if there are no restrictions. B. Find the number of arrangements that begin with LOG or with log. C. Find the number of arrangements that begin with L and end with M. Okay, so let's begin with uh, letter A. Find the number of different arrangements of these cards if there are no restrictions. So once again, we have nine different letters, nine different cards. So in how many ways can we arrange these cards? So you are correct. It's going to be nine factorial or nine times eight times seven times six times five times four times three times two times one or nine factorial. By the way, in IGCSE Additional Mathematics, your answer shouldn't stop with just 9 factorial. So you have to evaluate that and give the value. Uh, so it should be 362,880. Okay, now let's go to the uh, question B. Find the number of arrangements that begin with log. So again, we have... Uh, nine boxes here or nine that represent the nine cards and then notice that the first three are in orange so I just want to highlight that this three are for the log okay because our arrangement must begin with log so that means this uh, three letters are already fixed the first one to be L the first the second letter uh, or the second card should have a letter O and the third card should have the letter G. So it's already fixed. So that means uh, there's only one and only one option for that. So it's going to be one times one times one. So which means for the remaining cards, we cannot choose anymore the letters L, O, G. So how many letters now are left? We have six letters left or six cards left and that will give us 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 and that is equal to 6 factorial okay so let me just let me just repeat so for this uh for this card we have six choices okay six choices what are those six choices that we have we have a r i t h m so after we have chosen this card we have now five letters left or five cards left and so on and so forth until we reach one which is equal to six factorial and once again the value is important and that is equal to 720 arrangements what about letter c find the number of arrangements that begin with l and end with with m so these are what we call our restrictions so the strategy is let's begin to justify or let's begin to satisfy uh, those restrictions so we have the orange again represents the first letter of the uh, of the arrangement and 
definitely the ninth card represents the uh, last letter of the arrangement. So the restrictions are the orange ones. So this has to be L. So that means there's only one option for that, and that is one. And the uh, last letter of the arrangement has to be M, and that means it has to be M, so there's only one option. So after using L and M, how many cards left? We have seven cards left. So this box, if we choose to uh, start with this box, we have seven choices, okay? The second will be six choices left so on and so forth and we will come up with uh, 7 factorial 7 factorial which is equal to 5040 arrangements let's proceed to example number two so a shelf holds eight different books five of the books are biology books and three of the books are chemistry books question a find the number of ways the books can be arranged without restrictions then letter B, find the number of ways the books can be arranged if the five biology books are kept together. So notice that usually in IGCSE questions, uh, letter A or the first question has no restrictions. You have to find the number of ways wherein there is no restriction at all. It's usually like that. Letter B, that's where you would have the restrictions. So in, in letter B, Let's identify the restriction. The restriction is the five biology books must be kept together. Okay, let's start first with letter A. So if there's no restriction and then there are eight different books, so remember the concept, remember the formula, there are eight different books, therefore there will be eight factorial arrangements. And we have a total of 40,320 arrangements. What about B, the question with the restriction? Um, so this is our restriction. Five bio books are kept together. So again, the strategy is let's begin uh, thinking on how we can do this. Okay, five bio books are kept together. All right, one possible arrangement can be like this. History book, then you have bio books that are the five biology books that are standing together side by side and then followed by the other two history books or you can also have the five biology books okay first then followed by the three history books that's another possible arrangement now notice that I put this inside I put the five biology books inside one block or inside one unit so that will be considered as one block because they must be kept together okay so if this is one block and then you have the three history books considered as three different units so we have a total of four different units and to arrange that we will have four factorial okay so again this is the first unit this is the second unit, third, and then the fourth. So we can arrange, okay? So that is equal to four factorial, all right? But of course, inside this block, inside this block, we can actually arrange uh, the biology books in different ways. So you can have B1, B2, B3, B4, B5, but you can also have here B5, B4, B3, B2, B1. So inside this block, okay, how many arrangements can we come up with? That will be equal to 5 factorial. So the total number of arrangements, therefore, is the product of these two factorials, which is equal to 2,880 arrangements. Okay, now let's move on to the third example. Three girls and two boys are to be seated in a row. Okay, again, the arrangement has to be in a row or has to be in a line. Find the number of different ways that this can be done if the girls and boys sit alternately 
B, a girl sits at each end of the row, and C, the girls sit together and the boys sit together. Let's begin with letter A. So, we have this restriction, okay? The girls and boys sit alternately, okay? Um, how many girls do we have? We have three girls. How many boys? Two boys, right? So, it would be impossible to satisfy this condition if the boy comes first, right? So, we can start it with something like this. So, this is B1, this is B2, they represent the two boys, right? So, in how many ways can we put the three girls if the girls and the boys must sit alternately? So, we can have the girl here in between. We can have the girl uh, here before B1 and definitely the girl at the last. So we have this possible arrangement, correct? So, but the B2 can be here also, and B1 can also be here. So the number of ways we can arrange the boys will be equal to factorial. And what about the girls? We have G1, G2, G3. So we can arrange the girls uh, in three factorial arrangements. So multiply these two factorials, we will come up with 12. Let's go to letter B. A girl sits at each end of the row. So this is the restriction at each end of the row. So that means first and last. So this is a possible arrangement. So you can have G1. Um, at one end of the row and then you can have G3 at the other end of the row all right so for this um, for this end of the row how many arrangements can we have or how many choices can we have we can have three options for that right okay and then since we have already chosen this uh, at the other end of the row we will have two options for that and of course, we have one uh, more girl remaining, and then two boys, and then they can be arranged differently inside, and that represents a three factorial. So multiply the three together, and then we will have 36 possible arrangements. So again, begin with satisfying the restriction. So let's go to letter C. The girls sit together and the boys sit together so remember in the previous example if some items different items that must be kept together we will be using the strategy of putting them inside a block all right so let's take a look at this possible arrangement so we have the girls in one block that must be seated together and of course the boys must also be seated together all right so this is one arrangement of course the boys can actually be in front of the line and then followed by the girls. So that is also another arrangement. So those two different arrangements of the two blocks will be equal to the two. It will be equal to two arrangements. And in each block, let's say, look at this, B1, B2 can also be B2, B1. So that would be two factorial because there are only two boys inside. And in this block, we have three girls. So in how many ways can we arrange those three girls inside that block? You are correct. That is equal to three factorial. So we multiply this two factorial and three factorial to two, and we will have 24 possible arrangements. All right, so that's it for today. Hope that you learned a lot from this lesson video. Thank you very much and um, see you again next time for another interesting lesson video.